Hello. So, uh, we are back with uh, yet another part of Chrono Trigger. This will be part five. Um, I think it'll be not quite as long, actually, as the last uh, part, and certainly as part uh, two. Um, we're basically about to challenge Magus's castle, which is a longer dungeon uh, with a pretty epic boss fight at the end. So I think that's actually a good thing to do kind of as a self-contained part unto itself. Uh, so I think that's what we'll do for tonight. And uh, yeah, we will uh, see if we can take down Magus and stop uh, Lavos from ever being created because that's definitely how the story actually plays out. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, pick back up where we left off. I will uh, equip my glasses so I can actually see what I'm doing. And we're right outside the castle. Um, let's check uh, Frog's equipment because we didn't before. Yeah, we need to uh, update what he's using for sure. He still has the bronze helm and bronze mail and the power glove. So uh, we'll give him that extra rock helm and ruby vest we got. Um, and we should have the hero ring, or hero uh, metal, rather, on him. That ups the critical hit rate of the Masamuni, since he has that equipped now. Uh, so yeah, that looks good for Frog. Um, he has high attack with the Masamuni, too. 76 compared to Chrono at 68. And Robo also at 68. Uh, so yeah, I think we're ready to go in. an iconic uh, introduction there from Agus's castle. And here we go, almost like entering uh, Castle Shadowgate here. We should do that one sometime on the uh, Let's Play show here, by the way, Shadowgate. We did Deja Vu. And we should do Uninvited, I guess, if we, if we uh, do that to complete the set. So, yeah, we just have some creepy goings on here for the time being. even stopping us from grabbing the treasures here. So once we go to the other side, we'll get a better sense of what's happening here, have some enemies to fight, etc. Uh, let's just check our techniques. Uh, heal beam. I'm actually thinking we might want to swap Robo in now, just to Make sure he can get the heal beam by the time we get to the boss fight of the, uh, the castle. Uka, what are you doing here? Hmm? So this is actually kind of cool. As you can probably guess, these are like evil spirits or entities that take the form of people close to, uh your three characters, and the first one you meet is actually dependent on who's in your third party slot, so Robo has Luca show up, um, Luca gets Tavin, her father, and uh, Marley gets uh, King Guardia from the present day, and then for Frog there's uh, Queen Lean from the medieval era, and then Chrono gets his mom. <laughs> So, yeah, that's kind of a cool, cool touch. So, nobody here. Especially Luca showing up for Robo is kind of cool, because, you know, it's one of your own party members kind of being psychologically used against you. Mm -hmm. 
Ozzy's laugh, uh, almost definitely a slowed down version of the, uh, the soundbite from Final Fantasy VI that they used for, uh, Kafka's iconic laugh. In this game, uh, Norstein Beckler at the, uh, at the fair uses that laugh also. Actually, he uses, I think, a speeded up version of it. I wonder if that was, like, a synth, or if they actually had somebody record that sound bite for Kafka, and they got had it reused, uh, reused for this game. Alright, so... Yeah, these bats are actually... kind of annoying, and then these hench guys are too, they do, uh, that Crimson Rain is basically a sap effect. Maybe I should have done laser spin with Robo, hit them all at once, but the Cyclone from Chrono should take these two out, and, uh, we'll just direct the other attacks at the last one. There's actually a little bit of that laugh used in the background music, too. So we got triple read on these three, which is the first uh, triple technique we have that uses all three characters. And it's a good one to have for the boss fight at the end of the, uh, the castle. is the, uh, Omnicron is the dangerous enemy, although he has a very low hit rate. Um, the skeletons are pretty much one-hit wonders. <laughs> they go down in one hit and don't do a whole lot of damage when they attack. And the skeletons actually, like, beg you to destroy them, too. triple read, triple tech for uh, all these three characters is basically just a, a big hit that basically combines the X-Strike, Chrono and Frog's X-Strike with Robo's Robo-Tackle. So it does like a, like a 3D attack, although I think there actually is another triple tech that's called 3D attack <laughs> that, uh, that might be Chrono, Robo, and Ayla, maybe? So there's actually a bunch of boss fights in the castle. We're coming up on one momentarily. I mean, Rubble has high defense anyway, but that was only 11 points of damage that he took from that. How did you get past my cadaver pals? That probably sounded more clever in his head before he said it, right? <laughs> As did Sir Slosh. So since we have triple read, we might as well use it. Yeah, that's 900 plus damage. That's a that's a good hit. And Slash isn't a huge threat now. He picks up his sword. He's actually almost like two boss fights in one because he uh, eventually 
when this phase ends, the battle stops and then restarts with him using his sword and he does more damage and has uh, some more threatening attacks with that. For now we'll just keep blasting him with this as much as, uh, as, much as we can. <laughs> That's like his last move. Before he grabs his sword. So we'll hit that now, but when he damages somebody, we might have to uh, take a turn to heal soon. That's actually the same as Chrono's slash move, that thing he did. So, if he had been at an angle to hit Chrono and Frog with it, he, he could have hit them both at once. Or, like that, he could have <laughs> hit all three at once. So we need to heal up here. Mm, yeah. Frog's magic stat is low enough that his heal move does not do very much for him. <laughs> So I think we'll do, uh, I'll try out the sword stream on him and we'll have for a little heal frog. This is a water elemental attack, as you could probably guess, and it did nothing to Slash. I forgot that. He's, uh, I don't know if he's strong against all elements, but he is at least strong against, uh, water, apparently. So we'll do, uh, do another triple raid here, and then we'll probably heal. Robo on the next turn. Robo's actually getting low on MP there, too. Uh, so just have him do a tonic, I think, at this point. We'll have... We'll do this as a healing round. It's the either on Robo, and then Robo will use the tonic on himself. Back in good shape for another triple raid here. So we have one more triple raid and then heal frog up on the next turn. from the uh, robo and we'll do the x strike from which is two-thirds of the uh, triple raid oh nasty hit on Kron over there no oh, got him So we can actually take Slash's sword here, and it's actually a good weapon for Chrono, but we'll probably use for a little while. It actually gives him a plus two speed boost in addition to upping the attack power. So we'll definitely have that through the castle and into the, uh, the next section of the game after it. I guess I wasn't centered on the save point there. So now we need to... I should have, uh... Darn, I should have used the third save slot there, shouldn't I have? In case we get any more, uh... Technical glitches. Huh? Oh well.
So, temporarily for these, these, when you talk to them and say you want their treasure and they say they want to play with you, they turn into the shadows from the, uh, the runes in the future, which are only vulnerable to magic attacks. So just for this fight, for the moment, we'll switch Luca back in and just hit them with the napalm and take them all out in one shot. Because I'm pretty sure they absorb shadow element, and uh, that's what Robo's magic type attack does. Right, so swap Robo back in. All that for a barrier. So, you maybe could have guessed that's what happens. And we really want to take the Sorcerer, or, uh, what is it? Yeah, Sorcerer, out first. Because he keeps healing the other enemies. Ooh, big hit from Robo there. And again, I'm sticking with Robo to try to get that heal beam before the, uh, boss fight, the final boss fight in this section. Mm -hmm. Whoops. Yeah, that's that's why you need to take him out first. He just keeps doing a healing move that hits all of the enemies. Each one of these fights is worth 11 tech points, so that'll go a ways to helping Robo get that heal beam <laughs> activated. Tabby's right next to me, by the way. She's, uh, surprisingly calm at the moment, though. She's, uh, just kind of laying possibly asleep, or partly asleep, anyway. <laughs> that's, that's nasty, because... I don't believe we get a chance to uh, restore that before the real fight in this room. So we find out what the deal with that bat that's been following us since the magic cave is all about. So this is a tougher fight than uh, Slash, for sure. Especially since we start out already needing to restore Chrono's MP. Uh, 
So let's get a uh, Robo active here and let's try to bubble snap. I don't think Flea has the elemental uh, blocking that Slash had. I could be wrong. Oh yeah, that did good damage. Uh, let's see if we can get a triple raid here. Maybe not because this, confuse, this is a confuse effect. Throw a heal one. Frog to get rid of it. So we'll do the bubble snap again. Yeah, Flea has higher defense than it. Slash too. So that did, I think, like 900 some on Slash. Only 700 some on Flea. Cool background for this fight, too, with the, the carpet and the throne staying, but uh, the rest turning into the star field. Alright, so we'll do a spin cut with the uh, Chrono, and then we'll do a healing round for the other two. Jeez. Oh my god, come on. Alright, uh five then. I should have done a heal on frog first, I guess, since he's still uh confused. Alright, uh I'm move fast here. Unfortunately, he keeps missing when he tries to hit us. I need to revive Frog, I think, too. Well, maybe not. I'm still good. This fight turned south quick, though. Not really sure how a robot gets poisoned, but... Whatever. Uh, so I'll have him do that. Uh, just trying to recover from that string of nasty attacks Flea did there. Ah, uh, jeez. I should have stocked up on more heals, I guess. We probably won't need them too much after this battle. Alright, come on. tab there. So we probably should have done this side first, but uh, we can always go back to the other side to the save point before we move deeper into the castle.
enemies again to make sure we get those tech points. Kratomar probably will actually get lightning too by the time we get to the end of the castle. Hmm. Robo's he group heal is, uh, we almost have that and two more battles should, uh, get us that one. That's not as good as Robo's because, again, Frog never, unless you load him up with magic tabs, Frog's healing move just doesn't heal for her as much as Robo's, but it's good to have in a pinch anyway. So that's actually not a save point, that actually is what takes us deeper into the castle. So I'll skip these for now. Go into the next room and use the save point, and then I will do those battles on the way back again, just to, again, get the uh, EXP for it. Yeah, we just need one to get frogs in. Yo. It's like just a, an enemy gauntlet.
that Mr. Ogre's uh, female exclusive armor. Uh, let's see. Luca actually is lower. And I think at this point, even though it does limit her speed, um, it's hard to hard to justify still keeping the tab and vest on her when it's that much of a defense jump. So. Obviously, have to avoid the blades, and it only matters if it hits your front character. Uh, let's see who should get that dark nail. That's actually similar, um, similar defense to. Uh, not even similar. It's the same defense as the ruby vest, but it's a uh, boost to magic defense and. Uh, yeah, I think Robo should get that, because he has a lower magic defense than everybody else. That actually brings him up more or less, not quite to the same level, but in the same ballpark as the others anyway. Doomfinger. It's quite a quite a name for a weapon. That's for uh, Robo. Also. Let's see how that. Uh, yeah, he's under a hundred to get the heal beam, so we should be we should be good to get it. Oh yeah. By the time we get to the final boss. Everybody's out of range for a uh, cyclone. We'll try the rocket roll. I don't think any of these enemies absorb shadow, but they very well could be wrong. Yeah, that, that, that did good. When we do get the heal beam on Robo, we can actually then start. Until we get to the final boss, we can start swapping other characters into the slot. So I do want to fight this juggler here. Oh, he alternates his weakness between physical and uh, magic, depending on what what moves you do to him, basically. So right now his... Uh, Magic attack is or is a uh, physical defense is a uh, is up. Now his magic defense is up, so you just kind of have to alternate. That was only four tech points. I don't know if that was even really worth making it a point to fight, but this definitely. Oh, there is a juggler here too. <laughs> I was gonna say this won't be if it's just the Roly, because he's not worth much of anything for uh, experience or tech. And you kind of have to guess what weakness the juggler starts on, unless it's always starting on physical defense. regular tonic for that, so thank you. <laughs> so this room, he keeps opening pits in the floor. Um, and you actually want to make sure you fall at least once, even if you know the exact path, which I don't offhand. Because there are a couple of items down here. Huh? Alright, so 
chests. And there's, I think, a tab somewhere on the floor, too. Uh, there it is. And one set of the save points are actually enemies. It's kind of like, wasn't there one of the early Ultima games? Wasn't there a part where the floor attacks you? It's kind of the same thing where the save point actually attacks you here. Uh, I don't know, I don't think the save point enemy, which doesn't even have a name, I don't think that actually will hit you. Just moves around very quickly, but I don't think that actually does any damage to you. But you do get some experience, tech points, and gold out of it, so. So yeah, um, two of them are the battle against the save points. One is a real save point, and one is the exit to the room. The, the battles are always on opposite sides. Beam is doing. So yeah, here's the actual save point, which we might as well use. So I'm just gonna look up a map of this. Eh, I won't bother. I was gonna say I'll look up a map of this room so we don't have to keep doing it, but whatever. <laughs> real save point, so that would be the exit. So, that, oh. You just kind of have to guess which is the safe side, which are the safe sides and which are the battles. So, that, and, ah. to them this time. Why not? Jeez. Well, fight the other one while we're down here.
these guys actually have a rather nasty uh, double tech. It doesn't it actually didn't do that much damage. But... I guess maybe they always start with physical defense up. These guys are kind of nasty. They actually explode. <laughs> so. It's actually close to lightning too, also. Let's see if we do enough damage, if we can actually beat this thing without it exploding. You might not be able to, it might always explode, no matter what. Oh, well. another uh, enemy gauntlet kind of deal. The outlaws are the stronger enemies here. So I'll try to get rid of them first. Tonic on each of these guys. Let's see if we can avoid these using their their double tech. So we'll try to take out the outlaws and then. Uh, Start with a magic attack on the juggler. One of the jugglers.
Yeah, there's lightning too. So probably the next battle we'll actually get the uh yeah, if we need one one magic point to your uh, one tech point rather to get the heal beam. Alright, so since they seem to start always with physical up, let's actually do a big magic attack here. Two here with a laser spin since they both have their physical barrier up again. <laughs> Could even do another rocket roll just to make doubly sure. Alright, and there's our heal beam. He's in a pickle. Huh? I might not say that till later. It's another speed belt. Um, so just for the last little bit of the castle, let's swap somebody else in. We'll switch back to Robo, and I'll explain why. But uh, yeah, let's see. Switch to Marley for a little bit. I'll try out lightning too, just to show what it looks like. Oh, and that is they're strong against lightning or maybe magic in general. Hmm. This is mainly to hit the juggler and the flunkies, because actually it turns out they're not only vulnerable but weak to uh, lightning.
actually swap Luca in also. Just to, uh, again, kind of even out the attack point earning. Uh, I guess we didn't need to. Well, let's go back to Marley for this one, actually. Magic Scarf. And another Mist Robe. And they actually both have Magic Scarves, so I guess that third one's just gravy. <laughs> So this is kind of a, it, technically it's a boss fight, but it's it's like a gimmick battle. Because if you attack Ozzy himself with that ice barrier up, it just does nothing, and I, he might get a strong counter attack. I don't remember. So you're actually supposed to target the cranks. After this, we're close to the uh, final boss of the uh, the castle here. Kind of a goofy like uh, scream, like you know Disney's Goofy. <laughs> yeah. Somebody texted me. <laughs> yeah. So one of these is a real save point, and the other is. Uh, the transport to the next section. Uh, so we'll switch back to Robo. And... Ah, sorry. Um... So yeah, we'll just we'll just use another shelter. To, I should have just swapped them before putting Robo back in. <laughs> This is a great reveal, classic villain reveal in video gaming. I mean, we already saw him briefly in Frog's flashbacks. But, uh, yeah, this is where we meet him in person. If you're prepared for the void. This is so badass. <laughs> Alright, so. Uh, let's just see. Is it worth using the barrier? No, I only have two of them, so. No. <laughs> so let's hit him with the Masamuni first. Uh, the geyser, that's a sap attack. So, at this point, he starts changing his elemental weakness just about every turn. Or at least every turn he gets damaged. And that's why... You don't... Basically, you don't want to have Marley. Because he's always going to be... You're always going to be one element down. Because um, you have three characters and there's four elements. Lightning, 
water, fire, and shadow. Um, but if you have Marley, you're actually down two of the four elements, because Marley and Frog both have the same elemental attacks. So, you want to use either Luca or Robo, really. I mean, you can beat it with Marley. I did the first time I played this, but... You want to use Luca or Robo, for sure. And of the two, um, I think Robo's the best choice because he has the heal beam. So he has a good group heal. And uh, he also covers the shadow element. So we, we don't have a fire attack as our downside. So far, though, he's not using fire yet, so... And Magus knows all of the level 2 elemental spells, fire, lightning, and ice, too. And the geyser is nasty because that is an elemental sap on all three characters. What fantastic music Magus has, too. I mean, all the music in this game is great. Mitsuda and. For the handful of tracks he did, Uematsu did great work, as you'd expect, but, uh, yeah, so now we just have to kind of weather the storm since he switched to fire. <laughs> the hits with the Masamuni don't actually do a lot of damage at this point, but he, uh, it does lower Magus's magic defense. He has uh, 6,666 hit points, by the way. He's stuck with fire there. I don't know if we really need the heal beam again yet, but might as well do it anyway. And I'm pretty sure if you use an off element, one that he's not currently defending again, or not currently attacking with and weak to. I believe he absorbs it, so you end up healing him. Jeez, he keeps going to fire. One element we don't have with this lineup. And again, you're always down one element. But if you use Marley, and I leaned on Marley a lot my first playthrough because of her healing abilities, but, uh, yeah, if you use her, you're, you have two water characters and one lightning, so you're actually down fire and shadow. So, I think Robo's the best choice. Come on, switch to another element. Alright, there we go. Fire again! Killing me, Magus. <laughs> Sap effect from the geyser doesn't help matters. <laughs> I don't have any uh, lightning double techs yet, do I? <laughs> no. Frog and Chrono do get a uh, lightning double tech spire, but we don't have that yet. I think Frog needs the leap slash for that. Let's 
So let's get another heal beam and then hit the uh, sword stream double tech. Since he's weak to water at the moment. So we might be getting to the point where he changes his attack pattern. He stops. Yeah, when he risks casting a spell. Which is his magic barrier move. At that point he switches his attack pattern. He doesn't keep changing his uh, elemental weakness. So with these three characters, it's another reason to use Robo. We can just keep blasting him with triple raid. It's many turns as we're able to. I like that that little animation for Magus. It kind of reminds me of Kane in wrestling. Kane, uh, the Undertaker's so-called brother. He'd always be like, you know, adjusting, pulling on his glove and adjusting his glove. So we'll do the heel beam on uh, the heel beam and frog seal just to get our HP as high as possible after that Dark Matter. That's Magus' strongest attack. Yeah, King would be like pulling his glove tighter before he choke slam somebody. <laughs> That's kind of what that little animation for Magus reminds me of. Probably only a couple more triple reads should do it. Again, he has 6,666 hit points. And these are doing almost, I mean, the better part of a thousand per. Hmm. And there it is. Snap. the baddies. So in the original timeline, I wonder what happened then. Did, did Lavos just kill Magus? Because Lavos obviously still existed and wakes up in 1999. <laughs> The first time I played this almost seemed like a glitch, like it calls back to the beginning of the game, the intro. <laughs> it's almost like the <laughs> when the Sopranos finale aired, uh, when the screen goes black and at first there were people that thought their cable went out. <laughs> Honey, 
your father's the literal king of this country. I, I don't think I need to get a job at this point. <laughs> And we got kicked back all the way to uh, 65 million years ago, more or less, since we left from medieval times. Good thing she asked, wait, waited to ask and didn't just eat him <laughs> while he was unconscious, right? Yeah, the blue-haired one's a hedgehog. He's uh, he's probably a lot tastier than a frog. It's hard to catch though. Goes fast. <laughs> All right, so I think this is a good place to uh, save. I think we'll. We don't really need to adjust the party lineup at this point, I don't think, but, uh... uh we'll put Marley and Luca back in for now, and, uh... And I think we'll actually, when we get Ayla back in the party, I think we'll actually switch to Luca as our main active party member. There is one thing, actually, um, that we could do. There are more weapons available. So, uh... As well trade for some of those. See if we can get them all in one shot. I, I don't know if we have quite enough. We might need to fight like one or two of those frog battles in the hunting grounds to get all of them. Yeah, there's the one for Luca. There's the one for Marley. And there's not one for uh, Frog. I think we can get all of them in one shot here. So the Fang and Horn should be. Kronos. Yeah. yeah. That should be good. Incidentally, the previous uh, prehistoric weapon for Chrono, uh, the Flint Edge, in other translations is actually the mag Mammoth Tusk, which I think is way cooler. Um, you know, just conceptually that he just, he just has this giant mammoth tusk that he's wielding like like a katana <laughs> it's just a cool idea so yeah this will drop uh the aeon blade actually will drop chrono's speed versus the slasher but it way boosts his attack power so i think that's a worthwhile trade-off um yeah frog just sticks with the masa Mooney. he gets the magma hand and then the other trading items are still just the rock helm and the uh ruby vest the uh the armor there is actually eventually a ruby armor that goes up for trade there but uh not yet so for now it's still just the original items so yeah we got all of them uh so yeah we'll swap uh the two ladies in yeah. and then we'll just step outside and save and we'll call it quits for tonight forward to the past. There's no accompanying chapter back to the future, but I assume that's what they were going for anyway, for that chapter title. All right, so yeah, good place to stop for now. Uh, yeah, good section of the game. Magus's Castle is kind of, I think, a classic dungeon for SNES RPGs. Um, yeah, I just noticed uh, the idle animation on the map screen for Luca. I used to think she looked like she put on a gas mask or something. I think she's supposed to be reading a book. I think that's what it is. That makes more sense. <laughs> Obviously. Marley may or may not be using the bathroom. <laughs> and Chrono's just waving frantically, trying to get our attention. Um, anyway, yeah, that's a good place to stop. Uh, so, we'll be back with part two, probably sometime the week of the 6th, May 6th, 
I'm actually off that week, so I might be able to do a couple of parts throughout that week. I mean, did two parts this week, too. But, uh, yeah, um, hopefully get some more uh, headway. So uh, we will see again. I seem to have frozen again, too. Hopefully I haven't been frozen for too long. Anyway, we'll see you again. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.